What's going on? No Nonsense Know How here, and I'm excited to say that I'm finally done with my deck. So this video is going to be a quick little walk around tour, and then I'll jump into further detail and give you some more tips on how to do these conduit style railings on your uh, deck if that's the look you want to go with. Now why did I choose to, to do wood posts and railings on a Trex deck? Mainly to save a little bit of money because the Trex railing system seemed really expensive. Uh, also Trex gets extremely hot so it's bad enough having that down low but you can wear shoes to avoid that. But having the Trex railings, unless you go with white, extremely hot. The, the white PVC is a nice option too. But, and for some reason I just always thought that the conduit rails looked really cool. Now I know it's not up to code because technically you need what like six inches in between or something like that but if I ever have kids or it becomes a problem I could always just take hog wire or add extra poles in there if I need to. For now I'm leaving it like this and I think it looks just fine. If you want some tips on doing the decking not going to go into that in this video but check out my other video over here on uh, some tips to get that nice flat true and straight but yeah so as we walk up can see we'll start with the one by six pressure treated top plates I shall shiggy bond those or charred them with a driveway blow torch and that was pretty easy and then just hit them with some TWP 1500 pecan stain which is what the four by fours and two by fours are too don't really love the color I chose but my buddy had it laying around already so he I only needed like a quart to do everything instead of spending 50 bucks to, to get it all. I like the one by sixes because it leaves a nice area to set things on drinks and such. These are all secured with stainless steel Torx head screws as you go around. Now as I mentioned in my previous video I decided to surface mount these four by fours and it's I think it gives a much cleaner look. It gives adjustability, easier to replace one if you ever need to. But yeah I think this this the way mounting these railings it, it's they're very sturdy i mean if you push on these this is uh this is nice nice and tight and good i really like the way these trex fascia boards dress up the sides the miter miters on came out nice and clean too i'll now switch this video over to give you some tips on how to accomplish this when it comes to picking the conduit for your rails there's a few things to consider so let me brief you i originally decided on one inch galvanized conduit as you see here I thought that was the smallest size I'd like to go with. I think three quarter is just too flexible and skimpy looking. Uh, but one problem I quickly realized was it only comes in 10 foot sections and 20 foot sections. And that meant for each of these rails, I needed a 10 foot piece and I had four foot of waste. So I went ahead and did these three and then realized, well, I'm gonna waste a lot of money. Another complication I ran into with the one inch conduit is most wood boring bits you're gonna find in the stores go from one and one quarter to one and three eighths and the outer diameter of this is actually one and three sixteenths so i had to special order a hole saw online for this that got me looking up other options and i decided on chain link fence rails for the top rails so these are actually a true one and three eighths outer diameter over to one and three sixteenths i can now use standard bits that you can find at home depot and the stuff i found actually has a much thicker wall this is over a hundred thousandths wall thick thickness and the conduit is only 55 thousandths so you get a much more rigid pipe of course the main reason I went with the fence rails is because it came in sizes that better fit my needs you can get this in 10 foot 6 21 foot and 24 foot but keep in mind the first two smaller sizes do include this little four inch swedge on the end here so you got to consider that when you're doing this uh, however if 10 foot well i think the conduit over here this comes in six foot 10 foot and 20 foot which none of my local stores had the 20 foot lengths but uh if the 10 foot fits your build fine then go with the conduit it didn't fit mine and uh, probably the, the last reason i decided this actually all worked out for me pretty great is because i ended up getting these these are used fence rails that are in immaculate condition and i got like a really good deal on these compared to the brand new conduit so Quick tip for you, since I already had my holes drilled for the one and three sixteenths, I had to make these one and three eighths, and you can take a piece of wood like this, and your hole saw, and obviously drill a, a pilot hole like this, and then you can clamp this on here, position it exactly where you want it, clamp it down, and then take your hole saw, 
and run that through to where you need. That way the bit's not jumping all over the place and scoring up your 4x4. These used pipes do have some imperfections with them, but I'm thinking in the future I'm actually going to paint these black anyway. And whoever tells you that you can't paint galvanized is wrong because I painted that galvanized fence post over there, I don't know, probably six years ago. And that's been fine ever since. So to get these posts drilled out, here's the method I'm using. It's pretty time consuming and you could probably certainly do it quicker ways, but I feel like this is the most accurate. I have this template cut out here and I'll just mark my holes on both sides. Now to get a nice, clean, straight, true cut started on each side, I'll use this hole saw bit to just get it started. And I'm sure this bit's a little bit dull, but with this sappy wood, it tends to get clogged up pretty easy, so I just take this and kind of, you know, just uh, get those shavings off of there. It, I, I did a few of them with the hole saw straight through on, well, to meet on both sides, and it just seems way more time consuming with that. So I just use this auger bit here to polish them off. And then you end up with pretty smooth straight holes, but even if they don't, like this one here overlaps a little bit, it's no big deal because it's uh, in the center on both sides. And now to drill the all thread hole, just mark your center. Then I got just this long half inch drill bit here. So drill that straight through. If you want to end up in the center of that hole or close to it, you got to really pay attention and rotate this as you're drilling it to make sure that you're going completely straight in. That's, uh, that's pretty close right there. Take your threaded rod, drop that in, and then put your washer and nut in there. I opted to just bend my washer in a vise like this, and that seems to be working fine. You get full contact on there, and it just kind of bites in there pretty good and holds the nut uh, from spinning as well. You could opt to take a chisel and flatten the bottom of the center of that if you want the washer to sit in there perfectly flat, but I decided to just bend the washer. And then you're done the post. So, looks good. Ready to install. It's pretty straightforward to install it, but I'll give you a couple tips. So, I have mine marked out where I want to put it, and that's going right in between these two joists here. So, I went ahead underneath and added another piece of blocking there to stiffen that up. You can always go back and add some more bracing if I need to. This whole outer rim joist is going to be covered in Trex uh, when I'm done anyway, so you won't see all those screw marks. Next step to mark this half inch hole, I just have this piece cut out here with the center hole in it. And just put that right where you need it to be. Because again, I have my four by four traced out here. Hold that there and go ahead and get your hole started. Now you could run this straight down through or go on a slight angle to try to tag both of your joists. I'm gonna just run it straight through, but point being is it, the hole doesn't have to be perfectly straight because once this uh, all threads in there it's going to be just clamping this thing down flush flush and flush and that's what's going to cause the post to be level or not not how straight your hole is ran mine straight through and you can see it did end up right in between the two some might say that's not very strong but I think it's going to be plenty strong and if I want to add another piece of blocking behind it or any steel brackets, can always add that to make it uh, more rigid as well. Once you secure that bottom nut, you can go ahead and put a level on it. And if it's level off to either which way, you can come underneath of it with little tiny shims to make it straight. Or in this case, I'm going to pull it back out and just shave off a, a, just a, a hair off each side where I need it to, just to sit it flush. Or instead of shimming and recutting it, you could always try loosening that nut and then spinning it 180, which is what I just did. And I got lucky. Look at that. Perfectly level now, going both ways. So I guess... Uh, 
my miter saw might need some adjustments because I think that bottom wasn't a perfect perfect cut. And you can see on the inside the way that washer is sitting, no cutting or chiseling needed. You might be wondering about the stud on the bottom. You can countersink your hole if you want to recess that up in there. I'm going to just in the end go over and cut all the studs off with a sawzall and just leave the nut on the bottom so you won't really see that unless you get down low. As far as strength of the post goes, it's on there pretty darn sturdy. Check this out. I mean, you hit it on the way. Well, if you hit it midway, that's what you got. And if you hit it on the top, it's moving maybe a quarter inch each way on the top there. And I mean, it's on there. I definitely found the strongest post doing this is going to be the corner post. That thing, once you crank that nut down, it is extremely rigid and doesn't move at all. The weakest posts are going to be on the in the middle of your joist bands. Those you might need to actually add the tension rod all thread going this way into the joist to give it proper rigidity, if that's even a word. I think it is. <laughs> Once you get this post where it needs to be, you can pop it back out and then hit the bottom with some waterproofing or sealer of any type. And then once this stuff dries, I'm actually going to put some butyl rubber on it too. This is uh, like rubber membrane for uh, windows and such, sticky on one side. And then clamp her back down on there. You can see you might have a little bit squared out on the sides. You can always cut that out. And that should be pretty waterproofed on the bottom. Quick tip here that most of you professionals probably already know, but when you're choosing the wood for your 4x4s or your 2x4s that are going in between, make sure and try and get number one pressure treated. And as you're choosing it, try Try and find, I'm not a wood expert by any means, but try and find wood that has very tight growth rings, I think they're called, because that's going to tell you that the tree is older and it's going to be a much more stable wood. If you choose something like this that's a center cut 4x4 from Home Depot out of the tree, this is look at these growth rings. See how far apart they are from each other? This is very unstable wood, and you can see this piece here. How it's twisted like that. I don't know if you can see that. Boom, you see that? Well, that's what they're all going to end up doing. And now these might end up doing that too, but you have a lot less of a chance of that happening when you have the tighter growth rings, from what I understand. It's not to say you can't get good wood at Home Depot and Lowe's, but a lot of time you end up with a lot of knots and a 4x4 looking like this. Now, another option would be using a piece of cedar like this. And cedar really stays nice, true, and straight. The only reason I didn't use cedar is because I feel like it's too soft and that the the nut inside of it, nut and washer, would eventually just keep sinking into it because it's such a softer wood. And when I say this deck's done, it's actually not completely done because there is one last thing I need to address. These poles, they're just sitting in here superficial. They're not secured in any way. And I made them a little bit short so that you can still slide them out and remove them if you ever want to replace a post or paint the poles or anything like that. So they sit inside each side about three quarters of an inch, but they're just loose in there and if you grab them they'll fall out. Now I had quite a few ideas on how to secure these. First thing I was going to do was just put a stainless trim screw right here and here on each one of these. and and go up and down them and I thought that'd be a little bit ugly though I could always use a wood filler on it next idea was drill a hole right here and then have one stainless trim screw going that way and one going that way inside of this big hole and then fill that with a dowel then I was thinking I could drill a hole here and fill this with spray foam but then you got foam in there which could lead to moisture being trapped in there and they're also not removable then i also thought about okay i could pop this out and put like a spring inside of here or memory foam and then you push it in and and then the spring keeps them all taut now those are a bunch of the ideas i had but what i ended up settling on is using copper shims you can barely see it in there one on each side and now this pole's nice and tight can't go anywhere with it so let me show you real quick what i did I used some inch and a quarter, I believe it is, uh, copper pipe. You got to get the, it's either L or M, but you got to get the thinner stuff. You can't use thicker like this. And then I just cut it. And originally I was going to, I actually just did one notch in it and left that connected and slide it on. But that was really more than it needed. So then I cut that in half and each side just gets one little shim like that. But then you just take this, hammer that in. It's like so. And then if you want to recess it in a little bit further, you can just tap it in like that. 
and uh, do that on each side and they're locked for good so once you do it on both sides it's real tight now if in the future these holes this wood dries out and these holes get a little bit bigger or something like that I can always use a different style or just put the set screws in it but I like to try to think of the most unique way you can secure something. So I think this should work pretty good. And that'll put a wrap on this one. I feel like it got pretty boring throughout this video, but if you plan on doing conduit railing system like this, some of these tips should definitely help you out quite a bit. In this time lapse, I'm just putting up some of the two by fours between. You can see I'm using a ratchet strap to butt them up real tight and then screw them in place. And then that five four board on top will hold everything together. I did have some other footage on how to get those poles perfect on the stairs, get that all set up, but I feel like it was just dragging on so long, so I kind of just cut all that out of there. If you want a video on that, let me know. Comment down below. Like usual, any comments or suggestions you have for me, I definitely appreciate that kind of thing. Consider checking out my channel. If you watched this video this far, I definitely thank you for that. And until next time, this is Chris Brown here. No nonsense, no how. See you in the next one.